What's up guys? It's the Michael Lem here in 1997. Here you guys give you another review of The Wolf Among Us. Today we're reviewing episode three. Look, well, episode three, um, a crooked mile. That's something that I deal with all the time. Crooked okay, miles. So today we're reviewing I um like I said before my last two reviews, if you've actually seen any of them. Um these um are gonna be separate reviews. I'm gonna try to make the later episodes of these shorter. Try not to expand too much because then people will say long reviews, I don't wanna watch. But hopefully I hope you guys can actually watch these videos, watch my last episodes. It would be so nice if you guys actually do that and I really would like to support that. So episode three, Cook and Mel, is basically it takes place where the last game left off. I'm not gonna go too deep into who made the game, what happened, blah blah blah, because if you see my last videos, which I hope you could, you will know everything. So this is, takes place right after the events of the last one. And spoilers alert here, um, this basically takes place last episode, which is called Smoke and Mirrors, the last scene where we see uh, Bigby going into a motel and seeing a dead, um, not dead body, but blood all over a motel and sees evidence of a murderer. And basically this revolves him actually continuing down this path, which I really would say is really well done. The storytelling here is really well done here. I'm not going to spoil too much of it because the twists and turns, like all the other episodes, they all have some great moments that are just hard to see. It's really hard to actually talk about these reviews and talk about these games because they're so impactful in story. And if I talk about one thing, I'll spoil the other moment. And I really don't think I should because this actually is one of the best episodes. This, in my opinion, is the best episode uh, so far of Telltale's um, Wolf Among Us series of season one. And I really am glad that this episode really does do a good job with it. I'm going to my notes, which I also have. So, in this game, right off the bat, there are decisions in this game. You're always going to be playing as Big B, you're always going to be talking and looking up around and investigating stuff and examining stuff. And it's just like The Walking Dead. And that's a good thing, of course. It's always fun to play Big B because he's a different character. Like I said before in my last few reviews, he's not a man who has to protect a child. He's a grown man. He, re he well, he's a fable character. Everyone's fables, but. It also it really just shows his intensity as a character. As in my uh, playthrough, and my walk, my game experience, I played as a character who is like trying to do as best as I can, much anything as possible. And no matter what, as I played down this road, I always pushed everyone away from me just so they won't get hurt by the aftermath. And that's amazing how Toto really makes me care about these characters. And the writing again, like I said before, is really well done. That's all I gotta say about the writing because. I already said in my episode 2 of Smoking Mirrors, the writing in this franchise and Tilted overall has always been outstanding and really well done here. I really do love that overall about them. They know how to write dialogue that's smart, witty, and funny, and dramatic at times. Not funny like goof off, but like little sense of them like laugh at the character's moments in there. And one of the scenes that are at the beginning, which I really do like, is that they also show a lot of characters from the first two episodes come back depending on your decisions and what you do. Sometimes they'll be a different, like, as of a limb movement, they'll be there or not. Or if someone died, they will not be there. That's depending on your choices. And based on what I did, I basically, um, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but I did, like, a choice where I screwed up once, maybe you're in there, but that's it. But really here, I really, the visuals here are always been outstanding in the franchise. They've always been good. No murky visuals, so that's good. Um, one, characters, there's a lot more, actually, uh, characters here. They actually show some old ones. There's some new ones here and there that are, like, seen here for a second. And these characters have a lot more to do than in the last uh, episode, Smoke and Mirrors. The main problem I had with actual Smoke and Mirrors was that the game didn't feel like it was actually moving. The progression and the pacing of the story wasn't really actually about. It felt like it was just slow-mo. But let me just say right now, as soon as the game starts, when Quick Mouse starts, the story goes quick. It speeds up and you never feel like you're slow. So in a Quick and Mouse, Things go fast and they never slow down to the point of boredom. This game series has never been boring at all, so I'm glad for that. And I really must say that, uh, like I said before, gameplay is always fun. I always loved Telltale's way of doing quick time events because they always do it in a way that never feels repetitive or crappy like video games, like other video games, like big action black of video games do. So that's something I always liked about them. And one of the best things about this game is really the final scene. I can't really spoil it. But if you're going to see my next video, In Sheep's Clothing, that will spoil, I recommend you actually play this game 
before you see my other uh, review. Basically, the fact that this scene is so well done, it's so well done that they give me this, all this power. Tilda gives the character this power, so much power, and then takes it away from you at the right moment. You know what is good about that scene? I actually love it because of how well done it is. It shows Big B as a character, and not, um, it's maybe spoilers, but that's what you're gonna turn into by the end of this episode. That's what I'm gonna say. The only thing I wanna say, but still, you have to play this episode because it's just well done. It's a mid-season episode, and I really do like that for it, it is. I mean, like, Telltale's Walking Dead episode um, 3, season 1, Long Road Ahead. Outstanding episode. It was one of the darkest episodes of the series. Other than No Time Left. Then, a Walking Dead season 2 in Harden's Way. Really well done when it comes to this. I feel like that when it comes to episode 3, in my opinion, that Telltale knows how to really do a third episode. They know how to really set up the mid-season like type of episode in order to do it really well. And I love that. Um, <coughs> uh, chords to exploring and doing details. Actually, in this game, I recommend explaining this actual episode twice because there's like parts where there's passages and crossroads that you can't really intersect that. Because there's moments in the halfway throughout the game where you have to pick. Actually, th uh, there's three places you have to go to or investigate. And you can only pick two of those locations. So I always play it twice. I actually play it twice, and I actually got different. Um, Exploration areas and different dialogue choices based on what I did. And the only thing I only had problems with was that for some reason, while I was playing those experiences, I couldn't really explore every single nook and cranny. Like, that's when I'm about to tap the screen and tap that object I was going to explore, a cutscene would happen and pull away from that. That's kind of disappointing, but it doesn't really hurt the game too much. I still love this game overall. The fact of the matter is, is that Telltale's writing and story uh, has always been about letting us really explore our decisions as a character and letting us explore and really open ourselves up. But for the fact that the part when, I'm not going to, like, but parts when you can't explore every single nook and cranny is kind of lack, like, disappointing. But it doesn't really hurt the game too much, as this game actually runs on a timer. Doing has to do with a witch arrival. Now, this ritual level basically while you're running through time, so you only have like an hour and a half max to basically do all your investigating before which comes. <coughs> so that's what you basically need. Um, like I said before, I'm going to try to make these videos as short as possible, unless in keeps clothing, which I'll try to make the longest maybe, because I want to. I want to do my long videos again. I don't like short videos for some reason, because I don't really see the full details of what they're talking about, unless they blab off and they never stop cutting. But that's someone like me, for example. So overall, Wolf Among Us episode three, in my opinion, is the highest point. It's the high top mock point of this series. The best episode in the series so far. Unless Quiet Wolf can make this be born out of the water. <coughs> I love Kukuma. Kukuma is my favorite episode out of them all. I'm going to give this episode basically a 9.5 out of 10. Because it's just really well done. The fact that I can't explore everything is a little flaw, but that's not enough to really hurt or lower the score or try a 9 out of 10. I understand 9.2s, but seriously. If anybody gives us lower than a 9, then you do not know how to review a game. This is really well done. It's great storytelling, great dialogue, great choices, consequences, all that. I may not go into details about everything, but still, you really have to play this game. And basically, if you're a fan of Telltale, if you love Walking Dead, then you have to play it. And for the fact that those reviewers giving it lower than a 9, I don't understand what's wrong with you, for a fact, okay? I don't understand. I really don't understand what, why is it over, like, underneath a 9 out of 10, in your opinion. Like, like, your know, articles I read, like, Game Informer gives, like, gives, like 8, 8.5 out of 10, stuff like that. It's kind of ridiculous, in my opinion. Seriously? 8.5? And all that stuff? No. Overall, I still say check out that episode. Um, check out episode 3. I will be review, reviewing In Sheep's Clothing soon. Hey, doggy. I will be reviewing In Sheep's Clothing soon. I'm reviewing season 2 of The Walking Dead. Telltale's Games. Not the TV show. No. Um, I watch TV show, but I'm not going to review that show. Seriously, I'm not like IGN doing it all the time, 24-7. I don't write articles, please. Uh, so please like the video, comment below, subscribe. Also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Um, I'm on there all the time, basically. So I'll, I'll never be, there'll never be a time where you're like, oh, well, wait for me. Because I'm always going to be there all the time, seriously. Um, so that's all I got to say, guys. Uh, watch out for my next videos. They'll always be up daily. I'll be doing more videos of Barry Crime 8, uh, my little highlight reels. Bye, guys.